All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use Playmaker with Uframe. Uh, the approach we've taken uh, it takes more of a reactive approach to state changes rather than actually controlling the states themselves. Uh, I feel like this gives you uh, a lot more control when it comes time to tweak out the logic of your game or even the AI. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you kind of how we actually do that. So we've already created a uh, diagram called Playmaker Tutorial. And we're just going to jump right in and start going with it. I'm going to add a new scene manager and a new subsystem. Go ahead and wire those up, rename them. We'll just call that Playmaker Tutorial. We'll call this subsystem Playmaker. I'm going to add a new element. I'm going to call this upgrade a bowl box. So the first thing we want to do with this is actually create an enum. And you can do this in other ways, but we've built it to work uh, really well with enums. And we want to consider this enum the uh, state enum. So for this one, I'm going to say it's the upgradable box state. Let's just add a few states in there. Say it has an idle state. A upgrading state. And a dead state. It's really good to uh, define these states beforehand. All right, now we're going to add a property and we're just going to call it state. And let's wire that guy up to the state. We're going to add another property, call this upgrade complete time. And let's add the current level. We'll make this one a date and this a integer. And now we're going to add a couple of commands. So we can say the upgrade box can be upgraded. We can kill the upgradable box. And we're going to have a tick command. And I'll show you more about what that's about in a minute. So I'm going to just double click on the upgradable box and I'm going to add a new view. Call this upgradable box view. Let's go ahead and wire that up. And I'm just going to do the show upgradable box state just so we can kind of hang out here in this uh, upgradable box. Uh, system. And this is a new uh, feature in 1.3 where you can actually see the properties and you can see uh, pulling in noms. We kind of did this to help cater to this a little bit more. So, so far so good. Let's go ahead and save and compile. And moving on, let's go ahead and go back and create our scene. Just call it Playmaker Tutorial Scene. There we go. And now we're all set up for that. Now we can go back into our upgradable box here. And I don't think we'll have to go back out of this area anymore. So what I'm going to do is just right click on the view and go to add to scene. Then I'm going to click on the view, go up to game object, create other, and then go to cube. And just make sure I get that cube underneath the view. And while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and add another 
directional light into the scene just so things look a little bit better than just a blank uh, gray cube. So another thing I want to point out is that the view right here, this little icon, uh, this icon is telling you that it is a single instance, something that has been added in 1.3 to make it kind of easier to distinguish between the two. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just mark this as a uh, multiple instance element. So do that and go ahead and hit save and compile. And now you can see there's many of these here. This will just help you as you're looking at your hierarchy to know uh, how you've got things set up. All right, now we're ready to start uh, playmakerizing our U-frame stuff here. So just to make sure you understand, you've got to install the plugin, which will be under U-frame complete plugins. UF Playmaker FSM. Just install this package and you'll be good to go. You can always go up to the Tools, UFrame, and Plugins and double check that your Playmaker plugin is enabled. Alright, so I'm going to double click on this view just to bring it into uh, side here. And you can see there's no bindings here. Uh, but whenever we make a element playmakerizable via right clicking and going to use playmaker. It will automatically implement the bindings for you. So you'll get the uh, check boxes here automatically rather than having to go implement them yourself. So to demonstrate, I'll hit save and compile. And now you can see that the bindings are here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, check these on. And I also want to make sure that I choose initialize view model so that it wires up with the controller correctly. Now when we marked this as use playmaker, the implemented bindings went ahead and added properties for FSMs, which I can add here. But by default, if the size is zero, it'll automatically just use get components to find all the FSMs. So I usually just don't even set anything there. So these bindings actually use this property to populate variables, uh, invoke events. So these bindings use this FSMs uh, property in order to uh, tell Playmaker uh, when a variable changes via events and also uh, set the variables so you can access them directly in your FSM. So all your variable really has to do is just match the same name as you have defined in your element as well as the same type. Specifically for enums, Playmaker doesn't have an enum option so you just use uh, a string for this property and the plugin will create the code to directly work with strings rather than in ums. But the plugin also uh, has made this a lot easier for you. So with any property, I can right click and do create FSM on selection, and it'll create a FSM for when that value changes. Uh, but specifically to in ums, uh, it goes a step farther and makes it even easier for you to work with these in ums. So I'm just going to right click on this state. Uh, property and choose create FSM on selection. 